Hello, I'm Dr Kate McLean and I'm going to tell you about the optional module that I have running in Term 2 called Prosperity from Below, the Informal, the Illicit and the Popular. Now this course will start from the perspective of those who are marginalised by mainstream ideas of economy and development. People who are earning a living in informal markets, often in the global south, people who are the beneficiaries of development interventions like microfinance, maybe people who are earning a living by doing something that is illicit, nay illegal, so the drugs trade, trafficking, that's still earning a living, and also popular culture, the kind of um, the music, the film that counts as popular culture that might well be trivialised, fashion for example, might well be trivialised in mainstream political debates, but historically and currently is a real site for resistance. Yeah. So the, do this module if you are interested in supporting people's livelihood strategies in informal settlements in the global south, but also if you're interested in questioning some of the values and the structures and the assumptions about what counts as normal that maybe marginalise them in the first place. Yeah. A lot of mainstream development interventions, for example, I've done some work on microfinance, they might help in some cases, but in some other ways they're extending an exclusionary system rather than including people. And if you don't question the starting point and question some of the assumptions about what counts as a valuable economic exchange, what counts to GDP, you can further marginalise people and maybe place them in double binds, like that's a different way of thinking of exclusion is a double bind rather than a barrier. Yeah. So to give a bit more information about the kind of things that we'll be covering, we'll look at informal markets. So informal markets are peri-urban settlements, frequently in a lot of cities in the global south for reasons that we'll look at. The outskirts of the city is dominated by Informal housing, often due to rapid expansion of those cities in the 60s, 70s, 80s, rapid rural urban migration. And they, those cities have expanded very quickly with an excluded population and without the infrastructure that maybe serves the rest of the city. So we'll look at people working there, but not from the point of view of the victims of globalisation. We're going to look at, or, or the inhabitants of slums, I don't particularly like that word, right? So, but we'll look at them in terms of how they see their lives and what they can tell us about the very dynamics of global capital that marginalise them in the first place. Because they'll be working it. Their strategies to make a living will tell us about what's important in terms of keeping a city, a community together whilst also earning a, a living. Yep. Um, we'll also look at the illicit, that's the informal, that's the first eye, the illicit's the second eye. As the word implies, that's maybe illicit trades, drugs, trafficking, etc. Um, we're not going to justify that, like, but I can tell you that I've spoken to a fair few quite conservative policymakers in Latin America who'd be in favour of legalising drugs. Yep. So what and the good economic reasons for doing so. So what does that tell us about what illicit means? Who gets to decide what's illicit and what's not? Right? And how might we question that to create a more inclusive economy? And then finally, we'll look at the popular. Popular culture is a site of resistance. It's often trivialised in mainstream debates. So if you think of music, fashion, um, all the fun stuff, like it's, it's not often what they're talking about at the Bank of England, but the po po popular culture has always been a site of resistance from fiesta dances in colonial Latin America through to hip hop music now. And what does that tell us about different ways of imagining the world? OK, so I hope you I've sold you and I hope to see you in January. Get in touch if you have any questions. OK, thank you.